Hello, I'm Sam from Alder Systems, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to send HTTP commands from a 2N IP Verso and a 2N standalone access control unit, in my case, going to be a fingerprint reader, to trigger actions in a LAN. We can use this for multiple scenarios, but in this instance, I'll be triggering actions in a LAN based on user codes that are entered on the keypad of the Verso or the fingerprint that's entered on the standalone access control unit. Another usage, which is a real world example, is if there wasn't a cable between the 2N Verso and the gate motor. But there is a cable between the gate motor and the LAN controller back in the house. So you'd be able to send a HTTP command from the 2N IP Verso over the network to the LAN controller to close the relays and open the gates. Let's go ahead and take a look on how we can trigger actions in a LAN based on events from a 2N IP Verso or a standalone access control unit. The way to have a LAN listening for a command is to have some sort of web server on the controller. Intrinsic Dev have created a string to event driver which listens on a particular port number for a command, in this case a plain text command. Let's go ahead and set up the Verso first. So I'm going to create three users, Family, Gardener and Cleaner and give them each a different code and when that code is activated trigger a different action in a LAN. So for example, when the cleaner turns up, they can input their code on the Verso and a LAN will send a push notification to a touchscreen or to a mobile device informing the customer that the cleaner has arrived. So let's set the users first. In the directory, we're gonna create a new user and we'll call it family. I'm gonna scroll down and input a pin code. So I'm just gonna use one, two, three, four. And then we're just going to go ahead and create two additional users of Gardener and pin code 7890 and then a cleaner and that pin code is going to be 5678. So we've got three users in the Verso. Now we can add some automation and there's a couple of ways to do this. The first way is in automation under the services tab. So we go into there and click the little pencil. To access the automation element of a Verso, you do need a gold license. So I'm gonna drop an event in. So do user authorized and select family in the box. Then I'm gonna drop in the send HTTP request panel and then bind them together. I could put all the user IDs on one user authorized panel, but then I won't be able to differentiate the codes in a LAN to trigger different actions. Then I'm going to add two more user authorized panels and two more send HTTP request action panels and then just bind them accordingly. In the send HTTP request, we need to input the location of the LAN controller and include the port number and a command in the URI field. URI or the Uniform Resource Identifier provides a means of locating and retrieving resources on a network and identifies resources by name. So in this field under user authorizes family, then in the action, we input the IP address of the LAN controller. So HTTP 172. 1625.7. We then put the port number, which according to the driver documentation by default is 1001. And then we finish by inputting uh, the string command, so family in this example. So the full command is 172.16.25.7, port 1001, and then forward slash family. Now I'm going to do the same for the gardener and the cleaner in the action panels, but just change the string accordingly. So 172, 16, 25.7, port 1001, and then new gardener. And then for the cleaner one, just going to do the same string of text and put cleaner. And that's it in the Verso for now. We can leave all the other fields blank. 
Username and password could be used should you need to authenticate the command. Then you've got the HTTP commands such as post, get, put, and delete, and a couple of other fields, but we don't need to know in this video. Then we go over to Elan Configurator. So I'm now going to add in the string event driver. This is a licensed driver, so it does require purchasing from Intrinsic Dev. In the Input Output tab, we go to Generic Serial Device and add a new serial device. And it should automatically find the driver in the folder that you keep your Elan drivers in. In the properties, it says the driver is listening on port 1001 and the IP address is set to the network address, so 172.16.25.0. We then have to input the license and then the driver is going to be ready. And it informs us that it's a one-way driver, so we're not going to get any feedback. If we then click on strings, we have 15 strings available to us. Strings are just lines of text, so I'll put in string 1, family. String 2, gardener. And string 3, cleaner. Now I'm going to go over to the messaging tab and create a few push messages. So let's go to the first one and call it family code and input the text that the message will display. So the family code has been entered and I'm going to put in some tokens. So time and date. So that's going to show us the time and date on the screen once this code has been entered. Then I'm just going to create two more. So I'm going to create gardener and cleaner. Now we can create event maps based on these strings. So in the event mapper tab, I'll create an event map called family code, one called gardener code, and one called cleaner code. Under the family code for the event, I'll go to system family, which is going to be generic devices. And you've got the string to event driver in the event group. And then under string one, You've got string one received as the option and click OK. In the actions tab at the bottom, I'm going to have it send a push message to my mobile phone and play a sound on the touch panel. So I'm going to, go to add and in the system family, go to interface device, push messages, and then select the push message that I created called family. Then I'm going to add another action. So in the system family, I'm going to go to messaging and select an audio file. So I'm going to do a military call as an example. Why not? And play that on the tablets. Then for the gardener, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to turn on some garden lights in the outbuilding, for instance, where the gardening kit's all stored. I'll also select a different audible sound on the touchscreen. Then I'll also select the push message that I created for the gardener as well. Then for the cleaner, I'll add the push notification and then I'm going to turn on some lights in the utility room where all the cleaning gear is kept. Yeah. 
and then again choose a different sound for the touchscreen. So three event maps based on three different codes. We could add further event mapping by adding timed events, booleans, so if someone turned up at night, do something different, like bringing on more lights for instance, but I'm going to keep it basic in this video. Now all that's left to do is to test it. I'm going to go ahead and input the family code, 1234, and my phone receives a push notification and the panel plays the military call trumpet. Then I'll do the gardener code, but before I do that, I'll go to the lighting page on the touch screen, and then I'll go and input the code 7890. My phone and touch screen get a notification. The touch screen plays an audible sound, and the outbuilding light comes on. Now I'm gonna input the cleaner code, 5678, and the notification comes through. Screen plays an audible sound, and the utility lights come on as well. The second way that we can achieve this is in the hardware section of the Verso. Under hardware and switches, I'll create a new code, so 1111. In this section, we have four virtual switches, and at the bottom of each page is a HTTP command section. We can also input the HTTP command here as well, so I'll quickly do one HTTP 172.16.25.7.1.1. And forward slash SAM, for instance. Then back in configurator, in this string to event driver, I'm going to add a string command called SAM on string four, and then create an event based on that command. So when string four is received, turn on a light. I'm just going to use the utility light again. then give that a test. If you are to use the HTTP commands this way, you can do up to four HTTP commands because that's how many virtual switches there are. You can apply multiple codes to one virtual switch, but you won't be able to differentiate who's entering what code. So that'd be good if you had one code in use for a whole family, for instance. That's a real basic example of this driver. I'm now gonna do the same, but with the fingerprint reader. For this example, I'm gonna enroll some fingerprints to let's say an office building at the Tanbury Gazette. Let's go to the user directory in the fingerprint reader and create a few users. Let's start with Tony. And then I'll go ahead and enroll the fingerprint. Let's add another user, we'll do Lenny, and enroll that fingerprint. And then let's do one more, let's do Brian Gittins. Best let him in, I suppose, and enroll the fingerprint. Now that's done, let's head over to the Automation tab. The Automation tab is enabled by default on standalone access control units as they come with a integration license already applied to them. 
So let's create the automation blocks and the URI strings exactly the same as I did in the Verso. So I'm going to add in the user authorized panels and I'm going to select Tony, Lenny and Brian Gittins accordingly. And then for the HTTP request, I'm going to do the URI, so 172.16.25.7, port 1001, forward slash Tony, and I'll do the same for Lenny and Brian as well. and then press save. Now I'm gonna head over to the LAN configurator and overwrite the existing commands that I have. So I'm gonna to go to string one and change that to Tony. String two, change that to Lenny. And string three, change that to Brian Gittins. I'll just have it as Brian. Now I'm gonna to go to the messaging tab and I'll create some new push notifications. So I'm gonna do name, it's Tony. And for the message, Tony has entered the building and then put a token for the time and the date. And then I'll create one for Lenny. For Brian, I'm going to do watch out, Brian's about, and then time and date. Now I'm going to head over to the event mapper and I'm just going to edit the event maps that I have. So for Tony or string one, I'll edit the action. So I'm going to change the push message and only put it to the touch panel and then bring the lobby area lights, which I have on here, up to 60%. And then for Lenny, I'll do the exact same, but on string two. So for Brian, the office reception has cameras because we don't trust Brian. So I will say when string three is received, it's going to bring the main lights up to 100% and then it's going to send a push message to the touch screen and then it's going to jump to the CCTV page on the touch screen so we can have a good look at Brian and make sure he's not up to any mischief. So let's test all these commands out. So for Tony, we're going to scan the fingerprint and the push message has come through saying Tony's entered the building and with the time and date. Then we do Lenny as well. And again, we get the push message with the time and date. And then we have Brian. So we get the push message, lights have gone up to 100%. 
and then after five seconds, the screen's going to jump to the lobby camera. There's lots of ways that we can use this driver to create actions in the LAN and be creative with it as well. So I do hope this video has provided a basic understanding on how to create event maps based on the HTTP commands coming in from the network. Thank you for watching.